having me here. Uh, my name is Angie, and some information that I have for family members that are currently in Honduras at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of this information, you know, blackouts, uh, electricity not working in Honduras, cell phones not working in Honduras, is usually being left buried by, you know, the news that we have here, which is, you know, um, the sadness of Michael Jackson's death. So that truly bothers me a lot as a, as, as a person, and I mean, even as a Portland uh, resident. Um, speaking with various members, and sadly, some of them who actually support the coup, uh, a few of them who are actually against it, um, I have learned how difficult it is to have collective voices of our nation truly come forth. Um, first off, Imagine your only media outlet, and your only media channel is headed by somebody like Nancy Grace. Just imagine that. That's it. You don't have any other type of media. You don't have internet whatsoever. Um, that's what we are, the, my family is actually understanding um, that the, the media is giving them. Um, just uh, very uh, right-wing control media in Honduras. Um, the rest of the time, the channels are televising vintage telenovelas, Woody Woodpecker cartoons and uh, all soccer matches, which you know don't uh, don't don't blame them. I mean, it's it's pretty good entertainment, but at the same time, you don't you don't have the news, and you know we already seen that telenovela. But um, seventy percent of the Honduran population that are living in you know economic crisis are not having any outlet for their voices. Uh, and the people that have the, you know, the ability to actually show or, you know, to show the media what's going on, to Twitter the media what's going on, are usually middle class people who are pro-coup. So you are not getting most of what people are really going through over there. Um, my family living there, like I said, you know, there was um, mostly, it's, it's, it's a subtle repression of voice, subtle repression of daily activities of even going to go get you know bread gas or whatever you need to go it's um everywhere you go is you know tanks and guns and you know military everywhere uh, over there we call them los chafas which you know it's like a pejorative for the military police um and that's all you see um, another main concern reported only by independent media which is thankfully that's how we know that's going on like some of the independent media is um the four, you know, the, the, the many social justice organizers in Honduras, which are labor unions, educators, uh, you know, uh, organizations, popular organizations, are actually, you know, going into hiding or, you know, staying out of the, you know, staying out of, you know, the real problems that are going on in Honduras. Um, many of these progressively oriented individuals, two of them people that I know personally, are aware of the dangerous possibilities of actually speaking out. And actually just speaking out and putting forth that they are against this. They are against Celaya being sent to Costa Rica, just being woken up with tactics that they actually learned in School of the Americas and being displaced out of his presidency. Um, a few of these activist veterans that I know have luckily survived acts of repressions in the early 1980s. And at the same time, they're brave enough to actually speak out and say, this is not what's going on. And this is not what they're gonna let, what, they're not gonna let that happen. The fail, you know, one, o one other thing that the, the, you know, the media that we know right now fails to report is that these organizers who even participate in questioning the status quo uh, are putting their family in danger, themselves in danger, and those who know in danger. Obama greatly disapproves of the act of governing forces. He said that to us many times. However, we believe, I believe, that words alone are not going to bring democracy to Honduras. Everybody here, whether it's Portlanders, Oregonians, many US American allies are asking Obama to take a definite step to reinstate Mel Celaya, to actually show us that, she, that you know, real change is possible and that he needs to actually go for that. You know, truly, this, you know, I ask Obama, myself, as, you know, as an educator, as a public state worker, to have Obama actually, you know, show us that he is, really wants to distinguish himself from the last presidency and actually make a statement that he is going to take direct action against this injustice. Thank you.
everyone for coming out today. Um, we are going to be having an educational event about what is happening in Honduras. Um, it will probably be in the next couple of weeks. So if you check PCAS, P -C -A -S -C .net, um, PCAS's website, we'll have the information up there. And I also just want to urge people um, as well to go and call your representatives and really ask them to support the bill that would close the School of Americas. This is really important, as you can see in the direct link um, to what's happening in Honduras. It's really important that all of us here go and call or write our representatives and make sure that they know that we don't want the school to continue to train a terrorist and assassin throughout Latin America. The website for the SOA launch is www.soaw.org. It's a great resource for any information, especially if you um, want to contact your representatives. They have them listed very clearly there. And the name of the bill. And the last thing you can do is you can call the State Department and you can ask for um, Secretary of State Clinton and for President Obama to make an open statement themselves to the press saying that they're not going to work with the uh, coup installed government and that they're going and asking them also to end funding to Honduras until Zelaya is reinstalled. So thank you all for coming out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, um, Shizuko, the coordinator of PCAS, or any of our speakers. Um, and, you know, continue to read the news and have a good afternoon.